John Tavert with Bar Rescue and Nightclub and Bar. Both have seen a, a real boom this year. It's been an incredible year. We expected Nightclub and Bar to go up 12% this year, over 30. Wow. And the final numbers aren't coming in yet, but that's a huge increase for us. We're thrilled. This year was our biggest educational program ever and our biggest attendee growth in one year that I've ever seen. And I'm one of the founders. I've been here 28 years. <laughs> so it's really exciting for me to see this jump this year. It also speaks to our economy. You know, people are very tentative there for a while. They're waiting for the election, waiting for things to improve. That tentativeness is gone. Clearly, people are going back to work, and that's exciting. Our business is growing again. Definitely. Do you think the whole bar rescue end of what you do is is bolstering what we're seeing here at Nightclub and Bar as well? No question. No question. John Taffer sites are really active now because of bar rescue. Yeah. A lot of nightclub sites are fed through John Taffer sites, so there's a connection. But you know, Bar Rescue is me, and this is really an extension of me too. So you know, there's a great synergy between the two of them, which Absolutely. makes it work so well. So, what kind of trends are, are really on your radar screen? What are you really paying attention to? Well, you know, there's two major trends in my in my view. One is mobility, this the smartphone, making reservations, group reservations, ordering drinks, paying for your drinks, everything on your phone now. So that's a positive trend. Customers aren't quite comfortable with it yet but the trend is gaining more and more acceptance. The other trend, and this is meaningful to you, of course, is flavored spirits. And the flavored spirits trend is off the charts. To think that whiskey consumption with women is up 20% is remarkable. Women don't typically drink brown spirits, but you know, cinnamon flavored whiskeys, black cherry flavored whiskeys, you know, Crown Royal maple flavored whiskeys. These are opening up great opportunities for whiskey categories. Heck, we have flavored tequilas now, flavored rums now. We even have a tequila rum blend with Malibu Red. Spirits is really exciting now. I think it's one of the most exciting times in spirits I've seen in all my years in the business. Now you're spending a lot of time in a lot of bars. If, if there's one thing that every bar could do that would instantly up their game, is there one thing that you just like, you know off the, the top of your head, every bar, it would, it would make the, the experience better, what would that be? There's one pet peeve I have that really bothers me, and that is upselling. If every bar in America, when somebody ordered a vodka tonic, said what kind of vodka would you like, the industry's sales would go up 15 to 20% overnight, but nobody does that. And I find it remarkable that 99 out of 100 waitresses will never try to upsell you to Ciroc, to Smirnoff, to any premium brand. That's mind-boggling to me, and it's probably one of my biggest frustrations. We're leaving so much money on the table. Is there anything else that's on that no-brainer list that just, you know, that costs you nothing? You know, the other thing that costs me nothing, and this is a pet peeve, and if you watch Bar Rescue, you know I'm big on sanitation. Almost every cutting board behind every bar in America is disgusting. Isn't it interesting that we clean the kitchens, we sanitize everything in the kitchen, but that cutting board sits behind that bar with brown, discoloring E. coli colonies, and almost every bar in America has a disgusting cutting board. That's my other pet peeve. Yeah. So, we've seen the, the rise of the star chef. Do you think we'll see the rise of the star bartender? I think yes. You know, I think the time is coming for the star bartender. I just hosted the Friday's World Championship. 10,000 bartenders competed from over 30 countries to win the World Championship competition. Shake It Up is great. The Bartenders Guild is growing all the time. Yes. As a matter of fact, we are playing with the idea of a bartender. Iron Chef type of competition show. It's time. You know, there's a fine line between a chef and a mixologist today. If you're a good mixologist and you use your spices, your juices, and your ingredients, you're a chef of liquids, aren't you? Now, there's been a big argument about the old adage of, uh, of infusing vodka. The 19, you know, 80s, you know, put every kind of thing in a, in a jar, put vodka. Do you think that's, that has a room to come back? You know, vanilla Coke worked out okay, didn't it? You still have Coke? You still have vanilla Coke? Yes, I think so. You know, I'm, I'm in favor of any adaptation to any spirit that increases sales. I'm good with. And you know, these infused vodkas, uh, even blends of different spirits, you know, you turn your nose up, but when you taste them, some are done, they're pretty good. So yeah, I'm supportive of it. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, we've seen a, a real rise of are these flavored vodkas and oh, stuff. Yeah. Does it end? I, I'm not sure it ever does end. I mean, it's continuing to go on. I mean, as we sit here, would you ever think that there'd be a fluffed marshmallow vodka? No. Would you ever think that they're selling hundreds of thousands of cases of it? It's also delicious, but it's remarkable. Iced cake, 
Yeah. I mean, these are really fun products, and it opens up such great opportunities for mixologists, you know, to mix with these flavors now. It's pretty cool. So we've gotten pretty serious in the cocktails, in certain areas of the cocktail world. You know, craft cocktails, buttoned up vests, yeah. hand behind the back, stir 30 times. Do you think do you think that will increase, or do you think we'll see more fun come back in? I mean, what, you know, where, where does this all go? Well, I think I think the pendulum is starting to swing back towards fun again. The problem with mixology is that it takes four minutes to make a drink. And that can cost you a lot of money when you're busy on a Friday night. So, you know, now we're faced with the dilemma of how do you do quality, fresh mixology and still get drinks out in a minute? So you can seize the opportunity of the moment when you have high volume opportunities. I think the pendulum is starting to swing back on traditional, what I'll call long arm mixology. But short arm, quicker mixology, still fresh ingredients, good flavors. I don't think that's going anywhere. Do you think, uh, you know, in the big chains, we're going to start seeing not necessarily craft cocktails, but you know, improved cocktails, good cocktails. You know, I think we've raised the bar. I'd like to think Bar Rescue has helped raise that bar. Certainly Gordon Ramsay and Chef Irvine have helped raise the bar in the restaurant industry. And every week we show cleanliness, we show good drinks, we show good new flavored cutting edge spirits. I'd like to think it's taking root. Is there a spirit category that maybe isn't seeing its, eye, its uh, moment in the sun right now, but you think is worth keeping an eye on? I think scotch is the next one to explode myself. I think we're going to see a nice direction of scotch. I was at 10 Pound at the Montage Hotel in Beverly Hills the other day. It might be the most incredible bar I've ever seen in my life. Strictly scotches. Super premium. Average cocktail, 60 to $150. And believe it or not, worth every penny. Really? That's how good it is. But, you know, I see a real trend towards scotches. You know, we've really had a great play with clear liquors now. I think it's going to start swinging back to some brown liquors again. So. When you walk into a bar and you say, wow, what is it that's doing that to you? What, what, what really impresses you? It's intangible. What really impresses me is when you feel it in your stomach. It's intangible. It's a gut. It's a reaction. You know it when you walk in a great place, don't you? No, absolutely. And it's a lot of elements that come together to create that. That's why I'm in awe of it. It takes 20, 30 elements to come together to make your stomach vibrate. But when it does, that's as good as it gets. Now, you, when you engage with some of these bars, you're, on, you're there for very, you know, condensed amount of time. It's, yeah. you got to do what you do quick. Has there be, ever been a time when you've looked around and you've gone, oh crap, we are screwed, you know? Yeah, Headhunters actually, which was the second episode of this season, the Headhunters one, which we turned into metal and lace in Austin. Uh, about three hours into that uh, uh, rescue, I truly believed I wasn't going to pull it off. But you know, my deal with the network is they're supposed to find me the worst possible disasters. I want them to find one I can't pull off, because that's a challenge. They haven't yet. I'm not sure they're going to, but let them keep trying. So, uh, is there any of the bars that you've rescued that you've gone back to and were just really impressed with what they did? Yes. Spirits on Bourbon, which was our premiere episode this season. Last month, in one month, the revenues went up $100,000 in one month. And the barbershop chair that I put in is doing $32,000 a month for one chair. Wow. These guys took the work that we did and ran with it, made it even better. And it goes to show, if you just stick with the program with Bar Rescue, you can make more money. When you go back to what you used to do before you even give it a chance, I would suggest that that defies logic. Yeah, I mean, we've seen that. We've seen a couple of the bars. It's crazy. How does that make you feel when you... I don't take it personally anymore. Candidly, I just laugh it off. You know, there's no fixing stupid sometimes. <laughs> Best bars you've been in? It'd be the bars that you just think universally yeah. are... I think my favorite bar in the world is 10 Pound at the Montage of Beverly Hills. One of my favorite bars in the world. If I were to pick a favorite nightclub in the world, it'd be a tie between Excess and Marquee here in Las Vegas. Unbelievable nightclubs. $90 million in sales each year. It's mind blowing. It is mind blowing. How does how do they how does a bar I mean, you're going into some of these small bar, small bars which if they can turn a profit now, they're excited. How does a place make ninety million dollars? Well first of all you spend about eighty million building it. <laughs> Next you make it about a hundred thousand square feet. And third you put it right in the middle of the Las Vegas strip. You gotta start with that. Then you have to add your technologies, your lighting systems, DJs at fifty thousand dollars a night. And then you can start to approach those numbers. It's quite an investment to get there. So you've got the, the trade show, you've got the show, you've got your tour. Somehow I don't think you're done. What else uh, What else oh, is on your radar screen? We're actually working on another TV show that I'm really excited about, but I can't tell you about it today. <laughs> Call me in about a couple weeks and we'll talk to you about it, okay? I, I'm not surprised you've got something in the works. Yeah, we do. Well, thank you, and thanks for bringing bars out to the forefront. 
I mean, they're, they're, there's a lot of cooking shows and a lot of uh, restaurant shows, but it's nice to see a, a show, embrace the bar, show what, what you can do to it, and then, you know, put it up and say this is something special. Now, I love this industry. And if the work that I do raises the bar a little and raises the public's perception of us a little, it's worth it to me.